So you want to just jump into it? Okay. So Herman, we're here. We're here. You've shipped your game that you've worked on for how many years now? I think it's actually been more than six years. More have than you, six years. Have you ever worked on a game that long? I have never worked on anything that long. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Take your time, ample time. Um, all right, my first question I have is, you guys are, okay, you've done Horizon now for six years. How many years have you worked on Killzone as a team? So we started working on Killzone in 2000. Okay. And we shipped at the launch of PlayStation 4, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 13, 14 years, something like that. Wow. Okay, so yeah. that's a long time to mm -hmm. be in one franchise that you know in and out, you live in it. Yes. What's the first, when did the first conversation happen where you're like, you know what, what if we didn't make another kill zone? We started in 2010 um, with putting a brief together to the entire team. And I don't know if you guys would ever do such a thing at Naughty Dog, uh, but that's kind of our studio culture to reach out and kind of harvest all the creativity. Mm. There were hardly any guidelines, so we, we wanted to do something new. Uh, we actually did not exclude the possibility of another kind of game in the Killzone universe, that was also fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I might have said maybe not puzzle games or racing games, but other than that, anything goes. And then we reached out and I believe 45 guys pitched, guys and girls pitched from the team. Wow. Uh, and that was back in, I believe it was the, um, uh, November, December 2010. What did those pitches look like? Oh, they were all over the place. <laughs> you know, they were, they went from uh, obviously a lot of shooters, uh, is it like a PowerPoint presentation? Is it animation? Is it a prototype? Very different. I mean, okay. it, it really depends. So the artists have a big advantage, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly the guys that can make beautiful images, sure. that, that kind of sells easily, but the programmers, and some people just pitched an idea that was not a full game, but just a mechanic, or you know, how to approach AI in the next mm. game. So it's kind of from large, very big ideas to very small, but very focused kind of ideas. And mm -hmm. a lot of shooting stuff, some very different stuff. It'd be actually fun to dig them up and to do a presentation of. Do you remember one that's just crazy one that? Um, well, we actually took two of them forward. And one was this, uh, this kind of steampunk idea okay. that remarkably, it's remarkably similar to the, uh, the order that mm. shipped in its style. So <laughs> very similar in many ways, the setting of it, the, uh, some of the ideas for the gameplay of it as well. But we took that and we actually transformed that a little bit more into a super a superhero kind of thing. It was closer to home for us uh, in terms of the, the, the core systems being uh, more in line with the linear experience. Mm. Uh, and the other one was Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay, so tell me, you're seeing, you said 40 something pitches, how do you, which members are there watching this? How do you decide as a, as a group, okay, yeah. we're gonna go down this direction? I think I assembled a little board with um, uh, Michiel van der Leeuw, our technical director, JB van Beek, our art director, Angie Smets, our exec producer, Matthijs de Jong, our game director, and a few others. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was the group that people pitched to. And then we had a discussion about it, because my uh, in my world, a dialogue about stuff is always better than like a scoring chart of sure. how great it is. Because I just want to feel how it um, feel out how enthusiastic people are, mm -hmm. and um, that that usually works well. Uh, but it was not easy. I mean, it was not not something. To, we all knew what we wanted to do, but that made no sense for us. So you make, you've made, uh, and maybe you'll make them again in the future. More linear shooter mm -hmm. in this grim reality, and then now you're going to this lush, overgrown, mm. tribal hunting, open world. Yeah. How scared are you? Very, very scared. <laughs> and it was, um, it actually was a big part of the decision that we wanted to make something that's just beautiful. Mm. With, um, with Killzone, there's, there's beauty in it to me, right? It's, it's grim, but we kind of call it gritty beauty, sure. uh, the studio always. And that was a, a big part of our decision. We, we wanted to put the player into a world where you, you don't want to evacuate away from it. You don't mm -hmm. want to escape, run away. Uh, we wanted to have you know, 
place the player in a world and have him spend time in it. Mm -hmm. And it is just fun, go explore and be in it. And we see that actually in the game right now that people just don't do anything for a while <laughs> and just, you know, ride their horse, their robotic horse, or just explore the old ruins. And, and that, that part of the, of, of the mission, I think, has been achieved. Just the beauty, chasing yeah, beauty. That, that sounds very similar to when we were doing Uncharted and to a large extent, The Last of Us is the story is so dark Mm -hmm. We wanted the beauty of the world to be inviting. So, like, like you're saying, like you're compelled mm -hmm. to explore it, to appreciate it, mm -hmm. uh, and that would contrast kind of the more darker themes we're yeah. dealing with. Well, you guys must have kind of the opposite movement, going a little bit darker mm -hmm. into Tilu, The Last of Us from Uncharted. Yeah, it's it's. You want it dark. And I, I just that was just how the story evolved. Uh, it's not like um, we had like a ch a checkpoint, like oh, we're gonna contrast what we've done before. It's just, mm. that's the idea that rose to the top that we were excited mm. by. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, uh, so I know from our experiences, like what we start with, like for example, Uncharted started as a steampunk open world game that then evolved into this modern day prop action adventure. So I'm curious the evolution of Horizon and how close is the finished product to what you guys originally mm -hmm. envisioned? You know, in some ways, it's super close. Mm -hmm. If you look at sort of the, the, the top line pitch of it, the, the, the lush BBC nature documentary mm -hmm. element, robotic dinosaurs, the, the red-headed lead character in it, all of that was in, in the original pitch, which, by the way, was J.B. Van Beek's original pitch, our art director. He, mm -hmm. he was the guy that pitched it. Um, so all of that stands, and it's kind of, it, it almost sounds like too perfect. We executed on the original vision. But at the same time, when you look at the core combat, for instance, the very first prototype we did had kill zone M82 guns in it, and you were actually firing mm -hmm. your, your submachine gun <laughs> or your machine gun at, at, at these robotic dinosaurs. And that very quickly felt weird. Mm -hmm. and we, that, that's what we had, right? You start with the mechanics that you have. And um, it's just conceptually to be making that much noise in a beautiful forest, that was wrong. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those moments where we realized, you know what, we actually need to produce not just the tribe's cultures in this world, the people that live in this world, back to kind of the Bronze Age, but the weaponry comes from that. You know, you really can only have access to spears and slingshots and mm -hmm. bow and arrow and traps and things like that. Uh, it was a big moment. Did you guys go shooting slingshots and bows and arrows and do research? Some of us did, yeah. <laughs> there were all, a lot of big gun guys that uh -huh. had to uh, yeah, get some practice with bow and arrow. Uh, so I know when we make our games and we're polishing them, there's so much effort that goes into systems and aspects of tech that's invisible to the player. Mm. Like camera collision comes to mind. Like mm -hmm. when a camera rotates and you don't want it to go through like a pole or a tree or something. Um, Obviously, this is, is your first third-person game. So maybe talk to me about something that comes to mind that you think players might not appreciate, but was like a huge challenge to overcome for you guys. Well, you know, on a very basic level, when we, uh, so we're making a, a first, um, a first open world game, a first RPG game, we had no tools whatsoever. We started making it with the Killzone tool set which was not at all adequate for, for making a game like this. So the, the entire tool set had to be created from scratch. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to make a game that was um, you know, of a similar kind of resolution to, uh, to a first-person shooter, but then in the open world. Uh, so the engine needed complete overhauling, and it's, uh, none of that is actually you know, code in the game, right? Mm -hmm. and the tools guys, they, that's why we love them so much. You know, right. They are the kind of people that are making stuff that uh, the end user doesn't see, but yeah. it makes everybody else on the team super happy. Hmm. That's why they're, they're the real <laughs> heroes on the team. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, I assume when you're making a game like this for so many years mm. that you have low points in production where mm. things aren't coming together or you, you don't even have stuff on the screen. Mm -hmm and people lose morale, or they're starting to question the direction. Mm -hmm. How have you dealt with that? How do you make sure that people are inspired and mm -hmm. they can see that far ahead of what this thing can become? So many low points like that, right, during a six-year development uh, cycle. I think it generally took a long time for us to, to crack the core combat mm. of fighting these robotic dinosaurs. Like the, 
amount of time it took us to make the first machine, which was that big T-Rex, the Thunderjaw, mm -hmm. uh, it was a year and a half. So during that year <laughs> and a half, everybody starts doubt, doubting, is this actually ever going to work? You know, what are we doing? Right? We're making, you're, you're firing uh, arrows at this big overpowering machine. How will that ever work? When we cracked that, we knew we were going to at least you know, minimally have a good game in terms of gameplay, uh, but that took an, an awfully long time to get that. So that, that waiting period, that was a, a very long time. Uh, another low point probably was, you know, it took us, what, four years of working on it before you can tell your friends and family, really. I mean, <laughs> people talk a little bit, right, mm -hmm. to, the, to people close to them. But to not be able to share sure. with the world you know, what, you're, what you're working on is, is hard. It's mm -hmm. super hard. I want to hear about your experience, because you've oh. had some time to play now, Neil, haven't you? Yes, I have. How uh, far in are you? So I, um, I'm not sure what the locations are called, but I, mm. I'm at the desert. Yeah. So it's the first time I see like a, one of those flying dinosaurs, mm -hmm. crocodile dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, I think you are in uh, Main Quest 7, probably, something okay. like that. Yeah. I think I'm level... 19 or 20. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty cool that I'm doing things in a different order than someone else that's playing the game yeah. is doing it. Uh, so that kind of sticks to mind. And then uh, the other thing that, like, the graphics are staggering. Uh, yeah. I don't even think of it as graphics. It's like, I'm in the woods. I'm in this mm. overgrown environment. And I'm like, how are they getting so much foliage, such density mm. in an open world game? Uh, you better believe I'm going to my team and saying, like, Okay, this is the bar now. We, have, more to <laughs> we have to top this. Um, it's Friend, awesome. Friendly competition yeah, with yeah, the Worldwide yeah. Studios. And you know, we've, we, we talk about stuff. Mm. We compare notes all the time yeah, about tools do. and design. Um, yeah, it's, like we're all super excited for you guys. Like you know, we know how hard you've worked on this game. That's that's so great to hear. Uh, and then oh, like the nice. other thing is like uh, how much I'm, I like Aloy and mm. how cool of a character she is. And I'm actually really curious, like, what was the development of her like? Like, how was she pitched initially? And obviously, once you start writing, mm -hmm. you have more depth. Once you cast yep. Ashley, I, I assume, like, you get, you're getting more depth in her yes. interpretation of the material. Uh, so just if you could talk about that process. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So Aloy is our construct. I mean, Gorilla created her, but Ashley, as, as the voice talent, has been massively influential. Uh, we, I, I would say that she came together relatively late in the process. You know, it's a six-year process, mm -hmm. and we brought on uh, our lead writer, the narrative director now, John Gonzalez, mm -hmm. um, probably halfway through the product, and he's been very, very instrumental in, in bringing her to life. And He said to me that um, Ashley's performance really inspired him, so there was a lot of back and forth between how she delivered her lines and what he would write next and have her say. Uh, so that was a really good dynamic between him. Um, it was hard because, you know, people on, on the commercial side usually ask, well, can you do like a half page on how she is, mm -hmm. right? Can you type up her character? That was really hard. That yeah. was really a, a difficult thing to do. She came into existence while we were creating her, but she was always going to be certain things. She was always from the, uh, from the offset going to be an outcast, mm. right? And that really determines how she approaches the world. She's kind of fierce and tenacious, that was, that was always clear. Uh, but I think while we developed her and after uh, John gave her the main arc and, uh, and a lot of the dialogue, she became kind of a, a person with a lot of irony, a good sense of humor, a very amicable kind of person with a big heart, even people that are mean to her. She kind of embraces that, so she's kind of bigger and maybe not necessarily what you would expect from, from an outcast, mm -hmm. but that just works for me very well in the game. Another big moment was when we were really looking for the right face for this character. We're looking at age, we're looking at uh, who would, and we're looking at big, big, big names, models. Uh, and then one of our producers was watching a Dutch movie. He was out ill and generally don't watch Dutch movies. There's not much <laughs> for you to gain or learn. Uh, but he was super happy and he said this girl, Hanna Hoekstra, and she's actually a really very talented actress. She had that, that cheeky kind of fierce, funny mm -hmm. um, uh, attitude uh, when we met her and she was perfect. So she's the likeness. She gave her likeness to, to the character. Um, and then because she 
as a character, she's outgunned and, and outpowered by those massive machines. We needed her to be very agile, mm -hmm. uh, so the the, the performance, uh, the motion capture stuff, we used uh, parkour actress uh, for that. Uh, so the Aloy is actually based on three different sure. people, right? The face and then the voice, which is a massive part, mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the motion capture performance. Uh, I'm curious, I don't know if you guys set out to make the next iconic PlayStation character. Oh. Uh, but I think it's super awesome that, you know, there is a strong, I would say, non-objectified female character out mm. there. And I know that you've been kind of tweeting, like, um, girls and women cosplaying as her. Yeah. Like, do, does the team feel that effect, that, like, you're having mm. this positive impact on the gaming community and yeah, yeah. pushing I'd... that diversity? Um. I wouldn't say we set it out as a goal mm -hmm. during this project, but it's, uh, John Gonzalez mentioned it to me. He said this, this was an epic journey, and with all epic journeys, that leaves you changed as a, as a, as a person that contributed. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this has really struck a chord with the team, that uh, diversity actually works for us. It's not something we're trying to push, but it's something that just we found to be, we experienced it to be very invigorating. Mm -hmm. People really, really like it. The fact that there's not just a female lead, but there's so many different ethnicities sure. and different kind of backgrounds in the um, in in the in the world that we created. We have a probably like you guys as well, you know, 30, 35 different nationalities yeah. and people from all walks of life. It's really nice to see people represented, even mm -hmm. though that wasn't the primary goal. Um, and it's. Um, we get a lot of questions about uh, from some countries more so than from other countries. Did you not consider a male character, and is that commercially smart <laughs> to do that? Uh, and the honest answer is, we never considered not not having her be uh, uh -huh. a female character. And frankly, we didn't really set out for her to be a strong female lead, because oftentimes, lead female leads need to be strong female leads. Mm -hmm. no, you, Aloy gets beaten sometimes. Right. Like she's she's fierce and strong in the sense that she'll fight back, but you know she'll find her match sometimes, and uh, so she can't always. Like, we wanted her to be fundamentally human, yeah. and, and fundamentally human people can be really strong, but they're sometimes weak yeah. as well. Well, so strong to me means complex. Yeah. That at, at times she's strong, at times she's mm. weak, at times she's happy, at times she's really vulnerable and it's cool to see all those aspects of her as I'm playing the game and because the game is so wide and, and I could I have all these interesting relationships with different characters, I get mm. to see all these different facets of her as a character. Yeah, and, it, and that is actually embracing that complexity because these days somehow everything needs to be a one-liner or a mm -hmm. simple kind of write-up. No, these characters are, they are many different things. She happens to be female but her, her gender doesn't completely define her. Maybe partially, but that's only part of her. The fact that she's an outcast is just as important. Sure. Uh, but it's an interesting notion, and I'm, I'm curious to hear your opinion about it, because relatability, if that's an English word, is actually really important, right? W when you make a character, to me, there was a, a big difference between be, being able to identify with a person that's very different as you, it might be more difficult, but that doesn't mean that you cannot relate to a person like that. So to have those moments in there, for instance, in, and, and you've played that sequence when there's a, a little boy that's really mean mm -hmm. and to give you those emotional choices. I tried to throw the rock right at his face. Right? Yeah, right. right at his I, face. I never doubted that. Good <laughs> on you, man. Good on you. Uh, and, 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 but that makes you express how you relate to a character like that. Mm -hmm. and that. And that even though you are not, you're never gonna be a red-headed girl. That stuff is always interesting to me, and I, I, for the most part, disagree with it, that I can't relate to someone because I'm a different race, I'm a different gender, I'm, I have different sexual orientation. Mm. Uh, and I always find weird that people say that, but I'm like, but you're okay playing a murderer. Like, yeah. how, how can you relate, you relate to that, to, yeah, but yeah, not yeah. to someone that's a different gender? So to me, it's, it's, it's kind of nonsense, and I find that the more a person is real mm. and complex and human, the more I relate to them, the, no matter what their background or um, well, that's a cool part. whatever there's, identity they they have. There's stuff in, in every character you can relate to, yeah. not not to everything right. a, a character is, but to some parts at least, right? And that, yeah, and, and to, me, to me, like I, I I disconnect with a character not because they're different from me, but because they're 
inconsistent or mm -hmm. they're contrived to try to tell some kind of plot point and therefore the, the storytelling wasn't honest. Yeah, so you got about five, six hours into the game then? No, I'm like... Eight hours? Fifteen hours into the really? game. Really? Yeah. So you did a lot of side content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, I played everywhere. a lot with like photo mode. I'm like, yeah, I yeah, gotta I keep taking that. pictures. Uh, so are you directing the title that's coming out this year? No, so You're not. Uh, the Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, yeah. TM. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I worked a little bit with that team to help set up the outline for that narrative, mm. for the story, and then I kind of walked away and like really let them um, own it. Uh, so it's pretty cool in that, uh, similar to Uncharted 3, mm. where I wasn't really involved with that game, I get to play a Naughty Dog game. Uh, almost with How fresh nice eyes. That? That's, wow. that's pretty awesome. And so you, you're not really involved in any of the playtesting and providing feedback during the course of that? No, I'm really trying to stay away. Uh, I do a little bit of mentoring with the people running that project, mm. so I meet with them and help more with production and pipeline. Um, but I'm trying to hold off as long as possible playing mm. the actual sequences. What a luxury position to be yeah, in. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. We'll see. I, I, I don't think I'll be able to, to wait until the game is fully yeah. done, so I think one of the upcoming focus tests, I'm gonna sit down and play it. Wow, man, we're, we're excited about that too. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. curious for you guys, like, so you finished, you're not gonna tell me what you're doing next, but I'm gonna ask anyways. Um, yeah. Are people already starting to work on the next thing? Obviously people are taking long vacations, they've worked yeah. very hard, but I know there's people in that team that are so eager that they're like, mm -hmm. they're gonna take one week off and they're already back in the office yeah. working on the next thing. Yeah, it's, we, we do that as you do, where you give, try to give people time off, but there's like the day one patch and there's a launch trailer, uh -huh. and so there's not really much time left. Uh, it's actually been, these weeks are actually vacation for people coming out to GDC and, and meeting their, you know, their ex-colleagues and, and hanging out here watching talks. And, uh, that is a big vacation. Uh, we had some of the guys that headed out to support Kojima Productions, so we had a big group that actually did a world tour. They flew from Amsterdam to Tokyo and then mm. around the world. So that was a, it's been um, Guerrilla Games around the world because I think we did events in 15 countries or something oh. like that. So the, the app group of people sharing their experiences has been really fun. Uh, I'm due for a little bit of relaxation actually <laughs> after, after this long process. How much are you guys, uh, I know this is sometimes unhealthy, but I, I can't help myself. Mm. Uh, go on NeoGAF, go on all these forums, uh, reading people's impressions, reading reviews, positive and negative. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's kind of en vogue to say that we don't care about the reviews mm -hmm. and you know we don't look at the GAF. Reality is everybody does it, right. right? It is just, I think it's just normal and healthy to want to get a good mark from the teacher when you've done your homework mm -hmm. and, and that, that's how it feels. So people were ecstatic when they saw some of those really positive reviews come in. Uh, and there's a lot of great stuff, you know, photo mode threat on the GAF, for mm -hmm. instance, is that we look at that. And yeah. some of the guys tweeted out too, uh, sometimes you find out about stuff first by being on the GAF. And I'm not that much on it myself, but we have some people that really mine it. And, uh, fair is fair. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's there I, I, for a I remember whenever our games ship, I'm like, I'm there for like a couple of days. You live just, there for a while. I right? live there for a while. Yeah, you in, learn about your stuff. Unhealthy sort mm. of way. Mm -hmm. um, you got to unwind after that too, because yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. there's so much to read and you can't read everything. That's why you need like a vacation where you just turn everything off and oh, just yeah. disappear for Go a while. Go black. Yeah. The black box. Yeah. Well, man, congrats. It's a really Thank cool you. game. I can't wait to fly back home and get back into it. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, We'll, we'll talk about it more after yeah, you yeah. platinum it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and congrats to the whole team. I know how, how hard you guys worked on it, so yeah, you, should, you should be really proud. If you guys have people that want to play it and don't have copies, then give me a shout. And we'll oh, they, are, they all bought it already, so. Good, even better, <laughs> right? Yeah. All right, Herman. Yeah, Thanks, thanks Neil. Yeah. Really good chatting this yeah, morning. Likewise.